this crochet for knitters video, I'm gonna show you how to work the basket weave stitch in crochet. And I always say that it's a good idea for knitters to have a little bit of crochet under their belt. And uh, I have a few fancy stitch crochet videos coming out this summer and I've been promoting them as dishcloth opportunities, which is really fun. I actually have already made two dishcloths from this stitch because it's so pretty and it's so fun to work. And I have had big projects lately, and this is just like a little bit of fun to fill the time between big projects. Anyway, this video is also really cool because I've never done a crochet video that has you working stitches around the post. And that's how we get the basket weave look in this stitch. Let's go ahead and take a look. You see how cool this stitch looks, and the whole thing that gives it this three-dimension basket weave thing is knitting around the front of the post and the back of the post, and the post being a double crochet stitch. And this is 22 grams of yarn. I had 22 grams left over from another project of this cotton blend yarn, and I'll give the exact instructions for the hook size I used and the yarn and everything, but I loved it so much that I <laughs> made two dishcloths already, and it's fun to work, and I think I wanna make 15 more dishcloths. But here you see it in a couple of different colors. I could actually give these away as a gift or something because they're nice looking and machine washable and everything else. Um, yeah, for dishcloths, but it also would make a very cool blanket. And if you start with a dishcloth, you can tell if you enjoy the stitch enough to commit to making a whole blanket. So I'm going to show you how to work this stitch. And I'll get us started here and then I'm gonna jump over to a different piece so this video doesn't end up being really, really long. You wanna cast, uh, cast on, of course, you wanna chain a multiple of six plus three. And in this case, I'm going to do a multiple of six, 18, and then add three to that, 21. And if you need a review of the chain stitch, I'll give you a link here to my video for a slow demonstration of the chain stitch. And I'm not counting because it doesn't matter because I have the other piece already finished. So we're going to pretend that I've changed 21 here. And the first row, row one, is just double crochet. And what I do first is skip two chains. You don't count the one on the hook. Skip the first one, skip the second one. I'm going to put a double crochet in this chain right here. And I'm going to put it under the top leg of this chain. So I yarn over, put my hook in, grab the yarn, pull up a loop grab the yarn, pull through two, grab the yarn, pull through two. And I'll give you a link here to a slow demonstration of the double crochet if you've never done it before, <clears throat> but that's really just it. Yarn over, go into the next chain, grab the yarn and pull up a loop, grab the yarn, pull through two, grab the yarn, pull through two. And you know you're finished with a crochet chain when you only have one hook, one hook, one loop left on the hook. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, grab the yarn, pull through two, grab the yarn, pull through two. And row one is just the same thing. You're going to work double crochets all the way across the row. And so I'm not going to make you watch me do that whole thing. The magic of television, I already have this, um, this row finished. Ta-da, look how fast I am. And now let me see here real, really quickly. Um, Chain two. Okay, so I finished this. The last part of this row is to chain two and turn work. Now I'm going to skip the first, uh, now I'm on row two. I'm going to skip the first double crochet. And you can see these actually do look like posts and so it's not out of the question to say working around the post on these. I'm going to skip the first double crochet and um, I'm going to work around the front of this post here, which means I want to work the stitch like that. The post is behind, I wanna work the stitch around the front of this. And so I essentially have to get my hook in exactly the way that I have this bamboo pin in there. And this is actually the hardest part of the whole thing is this first thing, this first stitch I'm gonna show you. Excuse me. Yarn over, go from the back between those two stitches around the front of that double crochet, grab the yarn, I'm pulling up a loop right now. I have to pull it back through the maze of everything I just did. Grab the yarn, pull up a loop, so I can grab the yarn and pull through two, grab the yarn and pull through two. I lost some tension there, but I did the stitch so slowly for, to demonstrate here. I'll do it again, I'll do better this time. Yarn over, come in from the back between those two stitches, go around the front of the post, grab the yarn and pull up a loop, 
you have to pull it back through this whole maze. I dropped it a little bit, but I'll do it again. Yarn over, around the front, pull up the loop, grab the yarn, pull through two, grab the yarn, pull through two. I know this is all done in threes, so I have one more of these to do. And the next one's easier. This actually isn't hard once you get practice going with it. Okay, now, I forget how much yarn crochet uses. I never have enough pulled out. Now I want to work around the back of the post, which means I want to follow the way that this pin is going this way, which is easier because I'm working you know, from the front to the back this time. So I'm going to work three around the back of the post double crochet stitches. So I yarn over, go in from the front, and back around that stitch, grab the yarn, pull up a loop. You see that's easier because we can actually see what we're doing. Grab the yarn, pull through two, grab the yarn, pull through two. One more time, yarn over between two stitches and then back in front, grab the yarn, pull up a loop, grab the yarn, pull through two, grab the yarn, pull through two. One more, these go a lot faster. Okay. And look what we have here. You see how this is working? You see we have basket weave looking stitches going already. I'm going to go through the um, working through, oh, through the front, not through the front, the post around the front, the post around the back one more time so you can see it. This is around the front. It actually comes from the back. There's one. There's two. There's three. That was the hard one, you see? It doesn't get, it's easier once you get in the swing of working it. And then around the back again. There's one. There's two. And there's three. We'll take another look and there's one more thing I want to show you about this stitch. When you're working this, because it's worked around the post and not into a stitch, the, it can kind of get compressed. So after you finish a row or you finish a few rows, you give it a tug and you'll see that it will actually grow quite a bit vertically because the, um, the post stitches will get right up under the top of the stitch where they're supposed to be. Anyway, this is a four row repeat and you'll repeat rows two and four and the only thing that changes between the different rows is that you work on some rows you work in front of the post first and in some rows you work in back of the post first and that's it. As always the written instructions for this stitch are in the video description below as well as on my website. Have fun and good luck.